Hey guys, welcome back to another Used to Go walkthrough. Today we're going to be doing the problem two of the 2019 December contest in the bronze division. So first off, I'd like to thank all of you guys for 30 subscribers. Um, I never could have continued to where I am now in this channel, even though I'm really not that far into being a YouTube having a YouTube success yet. Um, but I would really not be able to uh, look back and see how far I've come to today without you guys so just thank you for 30 subscribers and that so yeah without any further ado let's just jump into the video all right so if you just take a look at the problem you'll just realize that basically um, what they want us to do is that farmer John has gone down a walk on a road and basically on this road there are farms uh, and farms in fact and basically they don't have house numbers then they're, they're coded by uh, basically colors of mailboxes and then so basically each mailbox color is specified by a letter uh, so this is just A to Z and then the sequence of n mailboxes that down the road can be represented by therefore a string of n numbers like A B C D A B C uh, a string of n letters uh, in the range of A to Z so some mailboxes may have the same colors as other mailboxes. Basically, um, as you can see here, there can be two A's or two B's, two whatever. And Farmer John wants to know what is the smallest value of K such that if he looks at any sequence of consecutive mailboxes, he can uniquely determine the location that of that sequence on the road. So, for example, suppose the sequence of mailboxes along the road is A, B, C, D, A, B, C. Farmer John cannot set K to 3 since if he sees A, B, C, there are two possible locations along the road where his cons where this consecutive set of colors might be. So if we just take a look at the sample input, um, if K is 3, uh, Farmer John can either be in the ABC over here or the ABC over here. There's two ABCs, so in that, in that case, we have to go a bit higher. So if we just go one more, or K equals 4, if he looks at any consecutive uh, series of four letters, he can uniquely determine his location because... Uh, let's just say that if we start four here, A, B, C, D, that doesn't occur anywhere else. We know he's in here. Uh, B, C, D, A. Well, uh, there's no B, C, D, A anywhere else, so we know he's here, and so on and so forth. So that's basically the sample input and sample output. So what is the input format? Uh, we have N, so N is on top, and the second line contains a string of N characters, each in the range of A to C. So these would describe the uh, series of colored mailboxes on the farm. Or of the farms. So what, it, what, we, what is our task here? So we, we have to print a line containing a single integer, really simple, specifying the smallest value of k that solves Farmer John's problem. All right, so we already talked about the sample input, so let's just uh, get ready into uh, get into thinking how we're going to solve this problem. All right, so my initial thought uh, or thought process in solving this problem was that um, Basically, we're just tr ba um, essentially we're just trying to find any repetitions in uh, basically in substrings. So what I uh, thought I was going to do basically was I'm going to take uh, substrings of uh, inc increasing length, and basically we're just trying to find the minimum length. So we're going to check every length of substring uh, in this string on the string they give us, and basically if there's any repetitions, that means that. Uh, we can't uniquely determine Farmer John's p position because he can either be at any of those occurrences. So basically what we're going to do is that we're going to take basically, uh, let's just say, uh, I length uh, substrings of this string. And basically for every substring, we're going to check for reoccurrences. And if there is a reoccurrence, that means there's more than one place that Farmer John could be um, in relation to the mailboxes. So. Um, however, if we find that there's um, no reoccurrence and we have our minimum and we try to check for the minimum, then that minimum is the thing that we return. So um, you could use a ray list for this, but I found the set to be um, partic particularly useful in this case, and it shortens your code by quite a lot. So that's what we're going to be using. We're going to be using our hash set in order to check for reoccurrences of an increasing substring. So all right, so just to make that more clear, um, basically I'm just going to try to map this out. So we have 7 and A, B, C, D, A, B, C. And basically we can start with substrings of length 1. And um, if we just do that, we have A, B, um, C, D. 
and so these are just independent substrings of themselves and so far we <coughs> see that they're all unique and this would work unless until we get another a and this would mean that there is two a's so pharmadron could be either of those positions so we can't do that so we have to break out and increase the um, length of the substring so now the substring is not one but now two and it would be the same thing we would get a b then uh, b c and so forth until we get a b again over here and that means that pharmadron could be at either of these places and therefore um, that he can't we can't determine his unique location so um, and then they go to up to three and then they explain that over here but finally we go up to four and when we go up to four we get a b c d and then b c d a and then so on and then finally when we get to a b c we don't have a fourth letter and it would, instead the last one would be d a b c and that's and these two are different so in this case four would be the answer so that's what we're going to do here so basically we're going to keep on incrementing this variable over here we can just call it i and basically uh as soon as we find that um the number of i works and since we're incrementing we're, we're definitely going to get the minimum um we're going to return that number and that's going to be the answer all right so now that we um know our thought process here let's just start coding all right, guys, so I'm um, here with my ID here, IntelliJ, and I basically what I've done is I created a file, a Java class, and I basically have my input over here. I have my two input methods, and basically for the first line, as you remember, it's basically a number and then a string. Uh, the number is n, so I just read it in using uh, br.readLine, and then color is just going to be a string. So um, colors, you don't have to read it in as anything except a string. Uh, I don't think like an array or a array list would be just would be that useful so we're just going to use a uh, string so now that we have our input read in let's just start coding so what is the first thing that we need to do well um, let's first declare a variable for our k value and this is the value that we're going to increase every time and let's just declare a value called min k and this is what we're going to return since we're asking for the minimum k value uh, okay, so let's just declare a set real quick. So, as you remember, I talked about you basically using a set to check for reoccurrences. So, that's exactly what we're going to do. So, if there's a reoccurrence, then we break out and increment k. So, string, and there you go. So, set declared. And in order to basically um, do uh, iterating substrings, like basically a bunch of substrings throughout the lit uh, string, that means we have to use two for loops. So uh, we can set k to one, and k is going to be um, greater than n, and then k plus plus. Oops, k plus plus, and then for int j equals zero, uh, j is n. n. Uh, J plus plus. All right, so we have our double for loop here that's going to basically create our uh, substrings of incrementing length. So let's just declare that substring real quick. Let's call it uh, sub str is equal to colors dot substring. Now what would it be? So in this case it would just be J and j plus k as k is the, basically the number that we're going to increment here and we set it as one because if it was zero it wouldn't really work when we're dealing with substrings and uh let's just say if so basically what we're doing here is that um well if set contains uh the string already that means uh farm drawing could be at either of those places so we have to break out or but in this case, um, if it's not, and basically we're, you're just free to go, there's no other occurrence. That means we have to add it into our set to check for in case there is another occurrence later on. So set dot add sub uh, str. And else, that means that it's already contained. Well, what do we do? Then we just clear the set for next time. And we break. Oops, scroll down a bit here. So we clear the set um, for our next iteration, and then we br break out loop. And in this case, uh, if all is said and done, that means we have our minimum. So uh, after we break here, that only breaks out of this one. <coughs> so uh, let's see here. 
So that breaks out of that one. Okay, I see. So if this breaks out of this one, that means that basically it's done and we go back to um, our next iteration. So K increments by one more. However, if this runs smoothly for the first time, um, for if this runs smoothly, that means that um, there aren't any occurrences and all of it works. So that means um, that's our unique number right there. So let's just check if we uh, get to that point. So if we get to that point, that means that uh, J is going to be at its limit. So if J is equal to N minus K. Oh, I just realized something. Since we use K here, we have to uh, do that to stay in bounds. And... Uh, if j is equal to m max k, or it's or it's at the break of its uh, limit of its loop, that we can set min k to there to k, and let's just declare boolean right here, so we that it knows that we have to break out of our loops. So let's just say uh, no, not int boolean stop equals to tr let's just say uh, true. Actually, no, false. All right, let's go down here. And if we set the minimum to k, and then we say stop equals to true. I mean, it's time to stop. We already have found our unique number. Let's get out of here. All right. So out of um, over here, that we have to basically break out of it, break out of our uh, loop here. So if uh, not equals stop, or actually no, if stop equals to true, that means that we break out. And finally, what is the task that we're supposed to do here? out of all this code um we have to print out the min the minimum number or min k we are gonna close we are gonna close all right so let's clean it up a bit all right so that is solution for where am i i think i'm pretty sure it works so as you can see it's not a, it's not um a really long solution um I had a solution before that used array list, and it was quite long, but I realized that the use of sets can increase, uh, highly optimize your code and make it a lot shorter and easier to read and understand. So there you go. So let's just see if it works. Uh, let's go here. All right, so I'm going to go log in and find my file, and I'll be back when I find it and ready to submit. All right, everyone, so I found my file, and I've selected Java. That's the language we're using. So let's just sum it here and see how it does. All right, so it's graded 4, 8, and 10. There you go. So very nice. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed. And if you enjoyed, uh, I hope you consider subscribing. It's free. And uh, you can always un unsubscribe later if you feel like it. Um, no pressure. So, anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.